Friday, Jesus was arrested, tried, convicted, beaten, whipped, mocked, ridiculed, made to carry his own cross, and then ultimately crucified. But then on Sunday, today is the most glorious day in our religion, our beliefs as Christians, is that he was resurrected. And I want to give you guys a, a bit of a, something to think about. The Romans were so angry at this Jesus guy. The Romans wanted to make absolutely sure that he stayed in that tomb. The Romans wanted to make sure that any threat that they had stayed in that tomb. They wanted to make sure that these so-called weighers, Christians, had no reason to celebrate anything else that they would disappear like the bar Jesuses and everybody else in that time. So they sealed the tomb that took many men to roll the stone over. They sealed it, they roped it, and they stamped it so that there was no earthly way that that tomb could be opened. But then on Sunday morning, Mary and a couple of her friends, by the way, anybody know who the friends were? Wayne, do you? Mary and Mary, and probably um, yeah, that's some that's some uh, history for you guys to go look up. There was probably two other women. They went to the tomb. Now here here's the part as as followers and as believers that we kind of shake our heads a little bit. The ones that have hair, Charlie. Um, we shake our heads a little bit, and we think about the different implications that happened that Sunday morning. Mary, Mary, and Martha go to the tomb with oil to, because of the stench that would be in the grave by now. But if they were true followers, true believers of Jesus Christ, would they really have? That's me. Yeah. If they were true, true believers and believed everything that Jesus said, why were they taking an oil to go put it on his body when they should have known he wasn't going to be there? You understand? We go back to the old thing that I preach all the time. Out of sight, out of mind. But they go there, and they find the two men empty, and they're told... Who are you looking for? He's no longer here. So that's the pretense of what we're doing today. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the undeniable center point of Christianity. The defining doctrine of our faith and the most audacious claim in the history of the world. A man sent from heaven, crucified in the most public way, dead and buried in a rich man's tomb, which... as Sepulchre was sealed with security by the mighty military powers of the Roman Empire. And then a dead man who called himself the Messiah lives. The corporal person of Jesus of Nazareth exists today. He is not buried. He lives in a resurrected physique. And even more astounding... Because he lives, all who die with him in faith will also rise in body and join him again. Mind, body, and soul. Was the resurrection of Jesus real? Or was it just a story to push an agenda? A lot of people still to this day believe that Jesus was nothing more than a mere man. A probable prophet. And that was it. And I want to say something else real quick. This is pretty close to the most people that's ever been in this church at one time, so thank you guys very much. Now, there is no question about whether this resurrection of the Nazarene is metaphorical or physical. Over five, now listen to this, over 500 people saw him, many of whom 
lived to the twilight of the first century. These witnesses could have unmasked Paul, Peter, James, and the others as madmen had there another story to tell. They would have been profit in doing so. If only Peter, Paul, James, Mary, and just a group, the apostles that Jesus had with them, if they're the only ones that would have said, I saw Jesus after death, He was risen. If they were the only ones, then we're not here today. We're not here today. Because they would have been described as madmen, as liars, as zealots, good storytellers. This, is, this didn't happen. We wouldn't be in this church today and our faith wouldn't be the way that it is today. But God knew in order to do everything that He wanted to do with the crucifixion and the resurrection of our mighty God, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God knew that Jesus had to be seen by people that didn't know Him. Including people that hated His guts. Romans. The Roman Empire could not stand Jesus. They wanted to bury everything about Jesus under the rug. They didn't want anyone to know anything about Jesus, a resurrection, or anything else. They wanted it to be gone, just to be over with. But they saw Him. They saw Him live and in living color like we will again soon. Amen? Amen. There would have been profit in doing that. For the message of the resurrected and living Jesus was wrecking entire economies built on sensational religions of uh, mystical and mirth. Instead, the way grew by, grew by leaps and bounds. It imprisoned the apostles and their cells became chapels. They went to prison and they preached Jesus. They preached Jesus to the guards. They preached Jesus to the other inmates. They preached a risen, resurrected Jesus Christ who is not dead, but beat death and is alive and well. Amen? Bind them with chains and shackles and their prisons became parishes. Dispatch the most highly trained and loyal place guards and the captors became Christians. To the other dismay of violent antagonists, Lengthy imprisonments following kangaroo court trials were but leisurely periods resulting in faith in Jesus by the highest officials at the realm of the Roman Empire. The resurrection changed everything. Nothing would be the same again. And I know that people watch this from the cult, I mean the Catholic Church. I know that people watch this from Muslims, from Hindu, from whatever the form is of your religion. But I'm going to tell you something that isn't a secret. Your Muhammad died. Your Buddha died. Your Hindu gods died. And everyone else that proclaimed to be anything of anybody has died. They can go to their graves and they can worship them. But only one is the true Messiah that lived and he doesn't have any bones because he was resurrected and sent back to the kingdom to sit on the right-hand side of an almighty God who is still today sitting on the throne of a kingdom that we're all going to enter one day. Amen? Religion was supposed to be a, a cult of rituals based on folklore, based on mythological heroes and heroines, representation of, of metaphysical and untamed powers, made by spirits, uh, made by, I think Joel Osteen was back there, um, made by people that just want to try to make you feel good, make you believe in this one instead of the real one. See, the real one was there. They saw the real one. They were with the real one. They walked with the real one. But even them, even those people that walked with him had a problem believing at times. Can you believe that? <laughs> My God, good God Almighty. You're walking with the Messiah, the Son of God. You've watched Him heal. You've listened to Him preach. You have witnessed everything that nobody else has. But you don't believe.
get into that in a minute. But see, Jesus was history. You could speak of the time. You can speak of his place of birth, his life, his miracles, his death. It changed lives into a new life. In Jesus Christ and the resurrection, God entered time. He entered time. Our time. God entered our time through the resurrection of Christ. Christ and His resurrection, God entered our lives. Mankind was no longer alone to create stories that make sense of the unexplainable. But God's story had interceded all these stories. Our stories to being grace and truth. Everything had changed. Nothing could ever be the same. Do you want to know the gospel in the simplest affirmation? Christ died. Christ rose. And Christ will come again. That's as quick and as easy as you can put it. That book starts in the beginning and it ends in Revelation. And if you've read it from A to Z, cover to cover, guess what? Congratulations. I'll see you soon. It's a good book. It's called the good book for a reason. The resurrection of Jesus was a cause to die for. All the apostles would die for the message of the resurrection except for John, who would suffer for it, but he'd also die an old man in the par parish. <laughs> Thomas would go to India and be martyred. Mark went to Egypt and died while preaching eternity in the name of Christ. Others Extra biblical literature today would say that Joseph of Arimathea went to Britain. Celtic tradition tells us a Welsh king who was captured by Roman soldiers and brought to Rome. While under house arrest, he heard the gospel and brought the Christian faith and his beautiful message to the resurrection back to the British Isles. The Roman Empire had built its fortunes on the cult of the Roman Empire. But within years, despite unprecedented persecution, the amphitheaters constructed to kill Christians for bloodthirsty sport became magnificent stadiums, giant pulpits, and sanctuaries to proclaim the risen Christ. Let me tell you what I know. I know that over 2,000 years ago, somebody loved me enough to be nailed to a cross and tell everybody else to forgive him, to forgive them because they didn't know what they were doing. I know that 2,000 years ago, a man lived that was deceived, was mocked, ridiculed, and, and just absolutely scorned, and then he died. I also know that the blood of Calvary today still screams in agony and pain and disbelief of what's going on in the world. Hey, P. Diddy, I hope you're enjoying your life right now. I think that what the world needs is a wake-up call. I think what the world needs is for somebody to stand up that ain't afraid of a butt-whooping, that ain't afraid of sarcasm, ain't afraid of the threats and violence towards them, and speak the gospel truth of a risen God. I think that people need to stand up and let Sunday be every day. I told you all along from, from the giddy-up of the inception of me preaching, you're not a Christian if you don't act like it's Sunday to Sunday. There's no 23 and a half hour a day Christians in heaven. You either are one or you're a pretender. Quit pretending to know a Christ that did that for you. Quit pretending and trying to be a wannabe. You know, they say, you know, there's no part-time thugs. There's no part-time Christians either. Don't call yourself a Christian if you've not been washed in the blood of the Lamb. If those stripes don't mean anything to you, quit calling yourself a Christian until you've worked it out within yourself. Hang out with people that are Christians. Act like you're a Christian. If you're a Christian-owned business, be a Christian-owned business. Love one another. Help one another. Go outside and look what's happening in the world today. Go outside and look what's happening in the world today. News flash. Tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk. Here comes Jesus. He's not riding a sleigh wearing a red suit. He's coming with King of Kings and Lord of Lords red down his thigh. He's coming to claim the righteous. He's coming to claim every soul 
that have stamped themselves his. He's coming to make the miracles happen. He's coming to change lives. He's coming. Are you going with him? He's coming. Are you going with him? Everybody's complaining about this person sick, that person sick. Let me ask you something today. Let me ask everybody here something today. What's your resurrection story? What's your resurrection story? Did you beat cancer to death and then rose from the ashes? Did you beat down an illness and rose from that illness? Did you beat down alcoholism and rose from that alcoholism? Did you beat down drug addiction or beating on your spouse, anger, and then rose from that? Then you've been resurrected by the power of God. That's the power of God. That's what Jesus is all about. Jesus isn't some makeshift, fancy-looking guy with a goof up there on a pulpit trying to tell people that life's good. Life's not good. Life will be good when there's no children trafficked. Life will be good when not another soul drives and dies of a drug overdose. Life will be good when all these people that are abusing children and abusing others in unthinkable ways have ended. Life will be good when you can turn on TikTok or YouTube and somebody else and find out that all these people, these influencers that have been influencing our families the wrong way, are no longer. They're just no longer. And I'm not saying I'm Republican, Democrat, for or against. <laughs> Life will be good if somebody would quit saying that Easter is a celebration of a transgender holiday. Yeah. Matthew 5.17 says, Do not think I came here to change the laws of the prophets. I did not come here to change the laws of the prophets. I came here to fulfill them. The laws of the prophet are the books of Moses, which is Leviticus, that states specifically, man shall not lay with man. Period. That is sound biblical teaching. That's why that had to happen. To change all the Sodom and Gomorrahs and the cities and the plains. That is why that had to happen. To change the heart of the Pharaoh and the Pharisees and the Sanhedrins and the Jonathans and the Caiaphases. That's why that had to happen. To change your heart and to change this side of the church's heart to know that the resurrection of Jesus Christ absolutely, positively happened, and he did it because he specifically loved you, you, and you, and you. He loved everybody. He loved us the same. He didn't care if you were black, white, alien, Chinese, Japanese, or anything else. He didn't care if you were wealthy or poor. He just wanted another soul to go to the kingdom to his father. That was his main objective. His objective was to be the ultimate soul saver. And he accomplished that. He accomplished that on the cross. When he came off that cross with a thud and they wrapped him. Here's something really cool about opening that, uh, that tomb. You know, Mary went and told everybody. And the apostles, they start running. And Peter takes off. Peter's a little older than they are, like Wayne. He couldn't catch up with them. So the Apostle John and them go in, and Peter shows, and he walks in. They see two cloths. One of them's a mangled cloth. The other one's folded onto the bench that they laid Jesus on. Biblical, theological, during that time, that means something. When you ate... If you got done eating or you left the table, if your tablecloth was wrinkled, it meant you were done. You weren't coming back. But if you folded that tablecloth, it meant I'm not done, I'm coming back. In that tomb, according to more than one witness, Jesus' face wrap was folded neatly and put on the tomb because Jesus was telling the whole wide world at that time so that I could preach it 2,000 years ago, brother, I ain't dead. I'm alive, and I'm coming back live and live in color, and I'm going to save a bunch of people from the eternal pit of hell. That's what that means. It means he's coming. 
The horns are blowing. The fires are burning. The earthquakes are shaking. The sin is immense. And my king is getting ready to come down. And you know what? And take names. He's getting ready to come here and make a statement. God is not done with us, people. God's day is a thousand years. He's waited. And he's waited patiently for his people to come. He's waited people for the called to do what they were supposed to do the correct way. God knew when that had to happen. He knew it was going to happen. He knew that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said, Lord, if it, if it be your will, let this pa cup pass through me. God knew it had to happen because something greater was going to happen 2,000 years from now. Jesus did his work. Have you? Have you? Were you on that cross? Were you on that cross with him? Did you feel those, those whip beatings? Did you feel them? You're in church on Sunday. Look at the person next to you. You love them? God gave you them. God gave you the person next to you, your neighbor. Yes. <laughs> he can have mine back. God gave us everything that we have. Is it so hard to be appreciative? Is it so hard to put your anger in your back pocket? Is it so hard to legitimately praise God because you're thankful for the resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ? Is it so hard to lay self down and elevate somebody else? Is it so hard to understand the doctrine of Jesus Christ? Because I'm going to tell you something. That Bible is no joke. It's the greatest story ever written. You want to know why? <laughs> it was written prophesied, came true, inspired by God, given to man, and science has been trying to keep up with the Bible to proclaim it wrong for years and years and years. And every time they try to do it, they say there was no house of David, they find an artifact that says the house of David. They find out there's no Solomon's temple. Well, they found it. There was no pilot. They found his ring. There was no crossing of the Red Sea. Well, they found the wagon wheels at the Gulf of Aqaba. There was no Moses and the golden calf. Oh, wait a minute. They, they found it. You know, they found the whole rock with the, the calf drawn, how they were going to do it. They found that too. When are you going to start believing what God started, God is inevitably going to finish? He will quintessentially finish what He has started. He will not. Settle for less. Quit giving him less. That's got to mean something to you, especially today. Now, here's what's going to happen. A lot of people out there on, on, on iTube 247 and Saddle Up and, and AIM, a lot of people out there, a lot of people out there are going to leave this church today after our Easter egg hunt. And they're going to have a, a go home. They're going to have a couple drinks, watch the Cardinals lose, and, and do whatever else they do on a given Sunday. And they're going to forget about old Pastor John and the, and the Cowboy Church and everything that was said and the fellowship that we had up here. And then Saturday night, they're going to look at their friend, lover, wife, husband, or whoever, and go, oh, man, we got to go to church Sunday. They're going to come and get their God on in here on Sunday. Maybe change them a little bit. Maybe change them a little bit. I told a guy at church I was preaching at, he said, I can't come to church on Sunday because I still smell like Saturday. I said, you're exactly the guy I want on church because maybe sometime I'm going to say something and that Saturday alcohol is going to be nothing but coffee on Sunday and then your story is going to help somebody else with their story and then we're going to bring them to that Almighty Cross too and there's salvation found in everybody. Salvation and redemption can be found with every single person out there and in here. But you got to want the want. You got to weed through the junk and find somebody up here somewhere that is preaching the true gospel 
of Jesus Christ. Not the true gospel of Pastor John or any of the other pastors. It has to be true, biblical, sound. This is how you get saved. This is how you get to heaven. But it starts with recognizing what today is all about. It's about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The apostles, here's the thing. You want to know why the girls were the ones that went to the grave first? Because everybody else was so scared they ran. They just ran. Here, I'm going to mute this. Nobody could hear this but us. Fact of the matter is, most women are stronger than men when it comes to that. Most women have this commitment that most men don't have. I, I believe that women love harder than men. That's just my belief. I just believe that. Those men ran scared. They had to go be told what happened. And then they partially doubt it. And then they took off. Remember that only John, the male John, was the only one at the foot of the cross. All the other ones were the women that loved Jesus. But he was rewarded by being the only one that died of an old age. How about everybody today go to the foot of the cross on Resurrection Sunday? Let's go to the foot of the cross. Let's go to the tomb. Let today be your resurrection story. Let today be the day that you finally go, Cancer, you can't beat me. Heart, you can't beat me. Drugs, you can't beat me. Alcohol, you can't beat me. Anger, you can't beat me. Self-pity, you can't beat me. God's got me. And as long as God's got me, nothing else really matters now, does it? Why can't we as a society do what Jesus preached? First, hang out with like-minded people. Remember, the fruit will corrupt, a bad fruit will corrupt a good fruit sooner or later. Hang out with like-minded people. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Understand, God has never left the miracle business. It never had an expiration date on the Ten Commandments. I thought, man, I'm only going to... Eh, 2023 is good enough. He never put one on there for salvation. There's no expiration date on when you can get saved. Why not today? Why not let today be the day that you renew yourself in Christ? Why not let today be the day that you go get your giddy up on for God one last time, but you keep it? Let God be that drug. Be so addicted to God that you can't get enough. I did a sermon about 15 years ago. I caught all kinds of junk about it. It was called uh, A Shot of God with a Jesus Chaser. Funny name, isn't it? But I told people, you had to have God. And then we followed it up with the resurrection of Christ so that we know where salvation lies. Salvation is at the foot of that cross. You can get there. You can crawl. You can waddle. You can get in a wheel. You can do whatever you want. Just get there. Just let God know that you know. Let God feel that you know. Don't be a modern day apostle that runs and then comes back. Once we find salvation, let's keep it and share it and build everybody up. Build everybody up because everybody feels bad sometime. REM had a song, Everybody Hurts. And everybody does hurt. Everybody has a, I don't know why this is happening to me moment. Everybody has this, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm done with life moment. Were you beaten and spit on? Did you have a thorny crown put on your head and bleed profusely? Were you mocked? Did you have to carry your own cross? Did you have... Did you have these put in your bones? Did you? Then quit complaining. Until you're willing to take this, I won't hear it. 
I want to hear about how we can help you overcome all your obstacles. I want to hear about how we can get you to the foot of the cross and get splinters in your hands from hugging it so hard. I want to know how you can see that cross so clearly that you're looking like, and it feels like you're looking through binoculars because you're so close to it. I want to know how we can help you find your salvation. I want to know how we can help you get to the cross. I want you to know what I know. And that's that Jesus Christ died specifically for my sins. He was risen because he knew I needed it. And he's with me today walking hand in hand because he knows I still need him. You should take it that personal and then watch your life change immediately. Amen? And if God was here right now, he would say very loudly, See you guys later.